Hello, I'm Kevin, a senior manager on the AWS Security Assurance Customer Enablement Team. And hello, I'm Cheryl, a senior security partner strategist on the Security and Compliance Partner Team. Today, we're going to deep dive into the shared responsibility model through the lens of compliance and talk about how responsibility varies among AWS services and why control requirement applicability matters when performing audits and risk assessments. By the end of the presentation, we hope you'll have a new perspective on shared responsibility and a more straightforward path to overcoming compliance challenges in your organization or industry. We'll also walk through some of the new compliance-focused resources you can use. I'm sure everyone's familiar with the shared responsibility model diagram. While it has stood the test of time, the number of AWS services has expanded exponentially, offering customers even more options for building everything they need to grow their businesses and meet their mission requirements. So let's jump in and discuss how this diagram might change for each service as various compliance needs arise. Control responsibility is essential no matter the business model. And the key is understanding the deployment model and where the responsibility lies, when it transfers, and when it's shared. The AWS cloud services a customer selects ultimately determines their responsibility based on the amount of configuration work the customer must perform as part of their security responsibilities. If we take different categories of services, say EC2 for instance, everything from the operating system upwards is the responsibility of the customer. So that means it's the customer's responsibility to execute those patches backup data, and configure dependencies, as well as being responsible for security and network infrastructure management. Then if we take RDS, so AWS handles the maintenance and patching of the operating system and database engine, then the customer controls the network access to the database instance by configuring those security groups, setting up database users and managing their permissions and compliance configuration settings, such as CIS benchmarks. And then for S3, the customer is responsible for managing their data, who has access to it, and the encryption settings. The variance in responsibility among the services that Cheryl discussed often leads to questions like the one you see on the slide. Assessors must understand the scope of the environment, like how many accounts there are and which services are being used in each to develop evidence request lists where the shared responsibility challenges can occur. Once an assessor knows which requirements are covered by the cloud service provider, such as physical and environmental and media protection and maintenance, and a handful of others like contingency planning, whether or not a control is applicable to a service in scope matters. To address these challenges, we've been working on solutions that we'll discuss shortly, but first, let's step back and talk about how we got here. Across the industry, there have been many efforts to group cloud services differently to depict varying responsibility and service capabilities. The common thread for compliance is the evidence you are expected to demonstrate, which depends on what is within your control to configure instead of the category the service fits into. Because the line of responsibility varies among services, we work backwards from the configurable security options under a customer's control to determine how security control requirements relate to those options rather than the other way around. During a risk assessment or audit of your AWS workload, you can scope control requirements based on whether they apply to a given configurable service setting. We develop customer compliance guides to summarize best practices for securing a service based on the configuration options under customer control for that service and map these two security control requirements. These were first developed for the AWS FedRAMP program. The guides have been created based on our public user guides and security. And these quotes you see here are from real customers. So one is from an audit partner and one from a commercial customer. And we're learning that the guides are most helpful for teams that often work together closely, such as auditors and compliance teams that are responsible for gathering evidence and facilitating the assessment documentation. And then they map these to the related NIST controls. Here's an example of what a CCG looks like. Working backwards from the configurable options available to customers is an excerpt from what we call the Customer Compliance Guide. As you can see, we've summarized best practices from our S3 user guide and mapped the options that customers can choose from for the type of encryption and KMS key management choices they have. We then map this guidance to the related controls for each audit framework surrounding the topic encryption of data at rest. There are over 50 different customer activity topics that we choose from to determine if they apply to a service based on the security options customers can choose from. Going back to scoping and assessment, 
we remove control areas like physical and maintenance controls and organization specific requirements like policies and human resources controls. This makes the guides lightweight and focused only on the customer activities within their ability to configure the particular service. CCGs serve as educational resources for pre-launch in AWS or before adopting new services into your account. They can also help you after you're up and running for your next assessment. Our customers have a wide range of experience in AWS and some have robust risk assessment processes prior to adopting new AWS services. This aligns with our customer onboarding step. After this, they typically work with the auditors or risk teams to scope the assessment and negotiate evidence. Understanding how to best secure a service also gives customers insight into the expertise and effort required to ensure that they're compliant. But once you're on AWS, this is where our services like Security Hub, Config, Audit Manager, and others can help you enforce and maintain your security policies while detecting deviations. We're actively working with those teams and the folks building solutions to create a holistic offering that helps customers' security and compliance journey from conceptualization through implementation. Today, we have 120 guides available to customers mapped to NIST 853, and we will roll out guides to AWS Artifact with additional control framework mappings later this year and into 2023. To request access to CCGs, please email us at ccgrequests at amazon.com. Thank you.